Alright, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Um, those of you just popping in, Smoking Ape's already in there throwing down his six plastic gold medals there. We all know the truth. But welcome, I'm Steve K5ATA, and I'm your host. So thank you all for being here. Let me uh, get some stuff kind of situated here. Uh, a couple things of news first. Um, thing number one is Hamfest are still getting canceled. So if uh, you are one of those folks wanting to go to Hamfest Tokyo, the JARL just canceled the uh, Tokyo Hamfest, which is apparently the biggest one in the world. Or so that's kind of a big deal. Um, the AWRL National Convention is supposed to be at Hamcation this year. That's like February 11th, I think, if I remember right. And uh, 11th through 14th, I think. And, you know, I'm not I'm not so sure how that's going to work out, whether we're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, have a Hamcation in February either. So we are certainly hoping so, but we shall see because, you know, the Coroni is real. But, um, I had Don Gibbs in the house. Hey, Don, good to have you this evening. Smoking Apes here. Craig WJ6F. What's up? Oklahoma Ham Radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, another thing, um, folks who are actually back to the Ham Fest thing, I actually have heard of some of the January Ham Fest and stuff here in the States already canceling or bumping to next year so I'm not sure how public some of the information is that I have been told by by somebody that theirs has has been bumped so it's one of those I'm just not sure when the next ham fest is going to be I'm seriously considering just you know dropping a pin on my 20 acres here and say ham fest all a good game let's have, get her done but uh Bill hey Bill good to have you Tennessee Tar Hill Good to have you from Nashville. I was just up that way. Oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago. Um, ICOM 705, if you haven't seen it yet, um, Amateur Logic TV did a video, I think it was last weekend, on the current draw, stuff like that. So, you know, I know people like Mike K at MRD would definitely want to know just how long his battery will last, kind of thing like that. So check that out. I don't have a link to it right now, but... Uh, you having a ham fest in the driveway tomorrow? I'll be there. Right? Speak of the devil, Mike K and MRD in the house. But um, but yeah, they did a, a little video. Ray Novak did it with them, showing the current draw and whatnot on the uh, the 705. One of the things they ran it for a long time, and I do get that the screen uses up a lot of uh, a lot of that juice. But you know, one of the tests they did, which I'm glad they did it both ways. They did it screen on and screen off, but to me, I want to have the uh, the screen on. I don't. I just. I like to know it's on. I guess. A um, <clears throat> couple of little tidbits. My child unit and To's child unit are trying to get some sort of. Uh, y well, we say YL, but it's really school-aged, you know, young young adult girls net on HF. But they don't want to call it a net because you know nets typically don't appeal to all the uh, the girl population. They don't understand why somebody would want to just call and check in and check out of something. Um, they would rather just sit there and talk on the radio. So, But we're trying to figure out something to call it, stuff like that. So if you have any great ideas about you know, how to get that, that going, we're in the preliminary planning stages. Drop it in the chat or in the comments below. Um, QSO Today Virtual Ham Fest is August 8th and 9th. Um, Mike K at MRD is here. I know he's got a presentation in there. Um, looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. So uh, you do need to register, and the registration is open now. I don't have a link for that right now, but if you Google up, you know, uh, QSO Today Virtual Ham Fest or whatever, it'll, it'll pop up. Click there, register, and then I guess you'll get your virtual ticket. To uh, to get in there, 16 years in Norman, wanting to start a 20 meter. Told him about you. Sweet. Um. Yeah, 
drop them my email because, you know, and I say they want it to be young ladies, but, you know, it's, we, we need to find a way to get more kids on the air, which, you know, if, if you have that opportunity, take that opportunity and go from there. Let me know when and what freaks. I'll try to get one of my two teams. That'll work. See, that's kind of what being a father unit that's one of the things that I'm, I'm somewhat protective of my baby. And uh, trying to think of a polite, politically correct way to say this. There are some nut jobs out there, man. And, you know, I just, while we can't control everything, you want to keep things as safe as you can for them. And it's something I'm, I constantly have in the back of my head anyway, because I teach ham radio to kids in school too. So, you know, it's... It's constantly there, ways to keep kids safe, keep them from getting, you know, what are these nut jobs, you know, dropping an email or whatever. <clears throat> um, there are several little things about it that that can make that challenging, like, you know, the fact that unless they have a P.O. box or something like that, drop their call sign in and, you know, you can get that stuff. Hang on, I need some of this. Um but yeah, and you know they, the girls. You know, Bill said that folks are talking about a DMR, or talking about it on DMR. We actually looked at DMR, and D Star. I don't have a fusion radio, so. Um, but that's one of the things that. It's just finding, it, and there may be one already out there, but. We couldn't find one that wasn't run by. Some old dude, basically, and. Uh, you know the ones that were listed there. Some of them weren't even there anymore so you tune in and you know the silence was deafening so but yeah see that's what I was talking about. it may be easier for them to start one on a digital mode but I think half of it is the fact that and, and you know maybe a digital mode and HF um, I know that the two girls mine and Tio's daughter they, they like HF so there's a certain element of challenge to it you know where you know, you really have to work to, to hear it. You have to make sure your antenna is good to hear. I mean, you know, with, with the digital mode, okay, I can throw my little hotspot on the air and get there. And while that works, and it, it achieves part of the goal of them having like-minded, like-aged people to, you know, kind of socialize with and come up with weird, cool ideas to try. At the same time, they they want to push themselves to that that challenge, and I don't know. It's just one of those things we're trying to work on, and I'm trying to leave a lot of it in, in their hands because it's their thing. But I'm still, you know, the father unit in the room, trying to make sure his baby stays safe. Hey, Don, good to have you, man. Um, all right. So today, like normal, this is not just a. Uh, me preaching this the Sermon on the Mount kind of thing about tools and stuff like that and it's actually not just about tools it's about how to get some stuff to start out a ham radio workbench and stuff and not break the bank um, so if you're if you have something that as I'm going through these things you don't or they I don't have up here that you see throw it in here and you know we will talk about it because this is not by any means going to be an exhaustive list um, one last thing I wanted to point out is we have, let me turn that on. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and get myself out of the way because I'm not all that great to look at anyway. All right. We have merch. If you head over to Ham Radio 2.0's website, grapevineamateurradio.com, you can get you know some of the cool people stuff, um, T-shirts and whatnot. You can get the high fashion YouTubers one shirt. The DX Commander. I don't have the voice box like Josh does. There's mine. Bob K6UDA, the Smoking Ape, who probably has the coolest shirt in the world. And then N0SSC, who, well, it is a cup of coffee, so that's respectable. Um, head over there, hit that up. Um, channel does get, get a wee bit of that to help us out. So um, back to the, the list of, of goodies here. Um, most of the stuff, well, not most, a, a Bit of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is available in my Amazon store below. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help us out a little bit. 
Um, also, there's a Patreon link down below. If you feel so inclined to uh, help support our school club, we would greatly appreciate it. School is starting here, allegedly. And let's see, I go back in a week and a half. The kids go back in right about two weeks. And at this point, you know, it's it's looking like my budget for ham radio related activities is going to be a whopping zero. So, you know, we're going to have to punt, make it up as we go. So any support, y'all can give that Patreon stuff and Super Chat money and stuff that goes to help support that ham radio club. So it is much appreciated. Um, all right, let's see who we got. Got Don Izzo, Chuck, KB8YIT. Good evening, evening. I, I always see your name, and I never think I'm going to say right. I'm, I'm, a name, a name, I guess, is what's who you are instead of, you know, I always want to try to make it something fancy, like Aname or something. But um, And then Don, another Don's in the house. So we have we have the Don's, so we are good to go. Um First things first, like I said, this is not about breaking the bank. A lot of the stuff that you can get, if you go to this place, Harbor Freight, okay, a lot of this stuff you can get for free or for really, really cheap, okay. So I'm a huge fan of Harbor Freight. I know a lot of people out there are kind of Harbor Freight haters, but haters going to hate. Uh, the fact of the matter is for most of the stuff that I do and – uh there you go. It's anime. I got it. So, um, but anyway, most of the stuff that I'm going to do in the shack, Harbor Freight tools are, are more than enough. So, uh, let's see. OHR, the way I see it, make it as public as possible. Ham's daughters might hear it. So, and, and yeah, I, this is going back to the, the young kids net or girls net or whatever. I, I get that. Make it as public as possible. But, you know, I mean, I've, I've got some stories that I'll tell you sometime. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's you just have to be careful of some folks out there. Um, like, for example, the, the first AWRL national convention I went to was when it was at Hamcom. And back then I was a probation officer. And I didn't have to pay my way in because I badged my way in because I was there because – somebody was there that shouldn't be and we'll just leave that at that so you know just if you have kids and you're getting them on the radio keep them safe yeah, and that's with anything it's not just radio but anything keep them safe and it that's kind of my thing i'm always going to go back to is is this safe so but all right so back to the tools and goodies um like i said head to harbor freight um if you have one you can order it if you don't but Shipping kind of defeats the purpose at that point. You can Amazon Prime it or something, probably get a lot of it for the same money with shipping. But you can get coupons if you have one of these close to you. Plus, who doesn't love just wandering Harbor Freight for an hour? I mean, you know, my wife today said that they needed to go to Tupelo, which is about 45 minutes east of here. And she and her mom were listing the places they wanted to go. And, you know, her mom's pretty cool. And she's like, oh, I need to get some stuff at Harbor Freight. And I'm like, Tupelo trip, I'm in. You know, once Harbor Freight came up, I was there. So <clears throat> anyway, um, some of the stuff. Now, let me get my view changed up here. Get my keyboard out of your way. Get my coffee out of there because you can't drink that. All right. And um, one of the, the first things is a soldering station. So, you know, when I first started out, I had a soldering iron, and I'm not talking about getting a high-dollar soldering station. I think this thing was like 40 or 50 bucks or something like that. It's some, well, it's called the Xtronic Model 3020, and just the ability to control your temperature on here made a world of difference for, you know, enjoying tinkering with radio and stuff like that. Um, nothing sucks worse than... You know, having trying to start a project and you got globs of solder everywhere and whatnot. And it's just a hot mess. But you know, and I know I know this one's in my Amazon store. But it's I've had this thing for about a year now. I've used it fairly regularly. In fact, I went and picked it up from school to show for this video because my kids were using this at school, which speaks volumes, you know, to its durability there. Because 
you know, a middle school kid can pretty much destroy anything. And this thing still works like a champ. So, yeah, good, Bill. Glad to hear it working out for you, I hope, because it's, it's a, with my skills, it's a hot mess. And soldering is an art. In fact, you know, when I was teaching them to, to solder, we basically unsoldered a bunch of junk off of uh, some old motherboards the technology people gave me, and I taught them how to solder junk that way so that when they were making a hot mess, they were making a hot mess on something that didn't matter. But <clears throat> this is by far worth, you know, it's 40 or 50 bucks. <clears throat> it's, it's just, you can get a $5 one at Harbor Freight, and you're going to throw it through a window or something like that. So... You know, if you're going to do any kind of soldering at all, antenna building, um, maybe you want to tinker with some kits or something like that, I'm just telling you, get one. Yes, it's in the What's in the Shack Amazon store. Um, and there, it's kind of separated out into different sections, and it's got like, I forget what I call it, but it's something about like electronics and ham radio tools or something like that. But, but this is by far worth the cash and it gets hot enough you can actually you know solder some larger stuff with it so and yeah X, X, I didn't know Xtronics gives discounts to schools but you know that I run into a little bit of a problem with that because a lot of times to get those discounts that people offer to schools I have to use a school purchase order to do it and when you don't have a budget or a very little budget I can't use a purchase order to do it so I have to like you know buy it myself kind of thing which I mean, I, I'm okay with if if I have the money right then to do it, but I can't take advantage of some of those. That's like I said, that's why that Patreon and stuff's down below because it helps me buy stuff like that for kids to to build stuff. And they used I've got another one that's a a, a Weller brand, and I mean it, it it holds up just as well, but uh, except I didn't bring it. I, I should have just because it's kind of funny. One of the kids left the soldering iron sitting on the plastic, and it just melted a, a gap all the way down through there but it's just plastic it didn't, doesn't affect anything so but and yeah the best way to learn to solder is you know watch a video or two i've got one out there there's several of them out there and just start trying to solder junk i mean solder's cheap i sat there and watched one of the kids in my sixth grade class just you know melting solder and it was just okay so it cost me you know 50 cents but after that, he was in. He was like, okay, I can do this. I want to mess with this. I was like, boom. 86DM, Dennis in the house. What's up? Good to have you, man. Um, okay, one of the next things. And there are 1,287 different varieties of miniature or micro screwdrivers. Kyle! Kyle's in the house. Um, I've had this one for at least two years, maybe three now. It's the uh, I got it from Lowe's, so I don't I, I don't believe you can buy it on Amazon. It's the Cobalt brand, but you can buy those little dollar store, you know, this stu stupid little Chris Digital Analog Ham. Thank you very much, much appreciated, sir. But um, you can buy the cheap ones for a buck or so at Dollar Trees and junk like that. But I'm just telling you, I think I only paid like ten dollars for this, and it's got. You know, the little bits that slide out. Let me hold that up so you can see those. And you can, it's got a little sleeve of other bits. And I've i have not found anything yet working on little kits and stuff like that that I haven't been able to do with this. And remarkably, I have not lost this. So, you know, that's, that's my preference there. Are, I think I've got a couple other varieties or flavors in the, the Amazon store, but... Me personally, if you have a Lowe's near you, that's the one to go with. It's it's ten dollars, and it's ten dollars that you will not regret because it's, you know, I mean, some of those cheap ones you end up stripping the the bit out of and stuff like that, and then it just because of course it's got that one size that you need all the time, and then you bit you strip it out, and then you're screwed because it's it's done. Whereas I'm not sure what material Cobalt or whoever made this for Cobalt used, but these dudes are stout. I've it's held up like a champ. Um, number next thing is, well, let's just kind of go through. This is another Harbor Freight special. These are the, I forget what they call their brand of, 
I forget. It's their brand of cutters. I, I might be able to read it, but I'm getting old and I can't. These are just little side cutters. Um, I've had these for six, seven months. Um, they work like a champ. I think I paid five bucks. Okay, yeah, you can get some really expensive ones if you want to, but you know, I'm not using these for a job. I mean, these are stout. They're sturdy, and you know, you can get them five bucks. And Harbor Freight always has that twenty percent coupon or whatever floating around. So you need a, a good pair of cutters. And I actually have a another pair that's I call them nippers. I don't know what the real word is for them, but they're actually at school. I didn't get them, but they kind of come down so you can come down from above and nip it off like that. So, but uh. I love their tiny bins of uh, tiny pliers. Their bins of tiny pliers. But anyway, get get you a good pair of cutters because you know if you get a cheap one, you end up having to cut something and cheap steel or whatever is going to end up putting little dings in your and then it's not going to cut like you want it to. But that's another thing. So that's you know after your twenty percent discount, four or five bucks. Um, yeah, that's the high dollar version right there. Okay. I mean, in fact, I can. Probably pop that down one. Okay, it is the Centec Digital Multimeter. I paid a whopping zero for this. Okay, um, it does most of the stuff that you need. No, it's definitely not, you know, a fluke or something like that. But <clears throat> Harbor Freight had that coupon where you got something free with a purchase. And while it doesn't work for everything in the world, for basic stuff, I've been okay with it. I do have a better one, I will tell you that, but <clears throat> for getting started, you know, it's it, it's an option you can get for free. I use these. I have several of them at school um, because I can get them for free and I can teach kids how to do some basic testing and stuff like that using these because, remember the rule, if it can be broken, they will break it. And in fact, this one, I don't know. But there is something rattling around inside. Sorry about hitting the microphone. But um, <clears throat> but it still works, and you know it's that's an option. But it's something that if you have access to a nicer one, okay, yeah, get a nicer one. But this this works for the basic functions. Um, where is it? This is actually a new set because my other sets at school. Little heat shrink tubing stuff. Um, this is just a good way to to keep um, you know things sealed up, keep them from making contact with other wires and stuff like that. You're gonna build antennas or something. So yeah, they did. They stopped giving them away for free. I got these. I think the last one I probably got, Mike, was over a year ago. So which tells you they made well a Corona school year, not a full school year, of kids abusing them and. Whatnot. I think in the Amazon store they're like ten bucks. So this made an FTA W five K V during his live stream. Um, but anyway, I got the one that has several different sizes in it. You can get, you know, just the heat shrink wraps and stuff like that. And then there are options to melt it. Um, you can do the good old fashioned lighter method if you want to. You can do like I did and steal from your wife's um, scrapbooking stuff for a little heat gun. Or, you know, you can get the butane model at this, like, little blowtorch. Um, which takes me back to the soldering iron real quick, because I left it at school. I thought it was in the case, and it wasn't. I actually have a, a Dremel butane soldering iron as well. Um, that dude is a beast. So, if you're going to be somewhere where... You know, you don't have easy access to electricity or something like that, and you need a way to be able to solder stuff. That's it. My my honey got me that for Christmas a few years ago, and it's held up like a champ. This I just picked up this last year. So, and I don't use that a whole bunch, but it's it does have a bottle opener attached to it. I'm not sure about the uh, <laughs> the the safety there. Let's let's have flames and bottle openers on the same thing, but. <clears throat> I would ask Ape about that, but he drinks it out of cans. Um, yeah, I like that. That's my. In fact, I'm gonna put that back up here. That's 
that's my case for my my butane soldering iron there i i caught a few looks the first time toting that into school um the school resource officer conveniently just stopped by and visited for a minute but uh yeah i've seen you using that h that harbor freight heat gun ape i just haven't picked one up yet but i've i've seen it in in your videos it looks pretty solid i just i haven't gotten one yet so but yeah and if you need a, a carrying case that's the way to go. Of course, you get some extra hardware to go with it, which is always nice. But, yeah, I say that, and I'm really more of a Beretta guy. But, hey, that's what I have. <clears throat> um, you'll want a little set of <clears throat> needle nose or fine nose pliers or whatever you want to call them. I've always called them needle nose pliers just because it kind of sucks when you drop something down inside somewhere. And, you know, I don't know about you, but... My fingers be big, man. And uh, so getting getting parts and stuff like that out of stuff. Yeah, yeah, Don, I did get a few looks. It was – and of course, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I just leave that sitting on my bookshelf behind me. It's right there next to my toe. And um, so I have like my toe and then I have my, my Glock case sitting on my bookshelf. So everybody always asks and I just always open it up and – yeah, some things, when you teach middle school, you kind of have to do things for effect. So, hence the reason my toe's on a bookshelf, too. But, you got to keep them interested somehow. But anyway, the uh, needle nose pliers, this is an old, this is out of an old, old, old craftsman set. I've had this set for, gosh, I want to say probably 20 years. And I think even, the, I think I only paid 20 bucks, but you can get, you know, like they were saying in the chat earlier, you can go to Harbor Freight, pick up needle nose pliers for, on the cheap, you know, and if you have kids or whatever, take your kid, take your wife in with you, make sure all of them have the, the coupon on their phone and get 20% off of everything. I'm not above that. I don't mind saying that at all. Um, wire strippers. So you need a good pair of wire strippers. You can get the little cheapos that, you know, you kind of have to crimp on there and yank it off and it'll, it'll yank wire off. Um, you can do it the way I did it when I first started out, and that was the Swiss Army knife. You know, I just hopefully you don't cut your finger off or anything like that, but I've stripped a whole lot of wires using a Swiss Army knife. And for those of you who really want to know, it's just like the butane heat gun. It does have a bottle opener. But um, these things are nice. I forget. Got what I, they're in the Amazon store. I forgot what I paid for these twenty or thirty bucks. Eight bought bought a set of them. Do you remember what we, what these things went for? But um, <clears throat> you know uh, th these things. If you don't have them set up right, they're gonna get a, you're gonna get a lot of flack. I did a review on these several months ago, and a lot of people, you know, they're like, you know, they they don't strip the wire right. They you know it just pulls over the the sheathing there and stuff like that. You've got to have these things set up right. Once they get set up right these things are a dream man i mean you know it's just it i just don't know how else to put it other than it just it just pulls it apart and it's perfect you know you've got this well it's, I, I think it's actually kind of stupid but I, I don't use it the little dealy bopper that's the official name for it the dealy bopper thing here to you know get the right amount of wire in there but basically when you stick it in there this is the part that's going to hold the wire you just kind of stick it in until the piece of wire, you know, you got enough wire hanging out that you want stripped. And when you pull it, it strips that much wire. It's not that complicated. So, yeah, I used mine yesterday putting up a new ceiling fan in the bedroom. So, it's a – and they've got these other little crimper things at the bottom that I never use. Um, it does have the uh, cutters there, which, again, I rarely ever use because it's kind of it's kind of hard to – awkward to – use those to me but the strippers these are off the chain so um jim i think he said he's got a pair of those too so yeah these things you know you can you can grab them on amazon you can grab them probably from lowe's or i think they're a little more at lowe's and home depot and stuff like that but you know those are definitely in the the amazon store and it's that will save you or save you tons of frustration um Another thing, and to show you just how new these are, you need some screwdrivers. Now, these are just your standard screwdriver set. I think, once again, it's pit, 
Pittsburgh. Thus meaning it's the Harbor Freight deal. I think there are $7.99 and <laughs> minus my 20% because I'm going to keep on it. So, you know, $7.99. Yeah, I like tools. That's ham radio TVs here. And that that's kind of the thing is, you know, I worked my way through college um, selling tools and stuff like that at Sears. So, you know, I've got... I've got a ton of tools out there, but there were different kinds of tools. It's a lot of mechanics tools and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, I do have screwdriver sets, but I like to have a set. Well, now I need three sets. You know, I like to have a set of some some of this stuff inside the house, another set out in the shop, and then now I'm building a third set for the classroom. So, yeah, Harbor Freight it is. But these were like 5 or $7 before my 20% coupon. And I have never had any huge issues with any of the Pittsburgh tools falling apart, especially, you know, hand tools like this. I mean, I've not bought, you know, their generators. I've not bought any of their high dollar items. If anybody in the chat has, go for it. Although I did a review many years ago on a Harbor Freight electric log splitter. And, I mean, that dude's still holding up. And that's been like three or four years now. I mean, that thing's a beast. It's... It hadn't died yet, so in fact, I went to split some wood. Not that it's related to anything, but and it, you know, you kick it on, and then it would pop, you know, the breaker on it every time. And it turned out that there was just a dirt knobber nest and a little impeller fan in there. I knocked it out and worked like a champ. Um, yeah, and this is that's where I was going next is the free stuff. That's the free version. Okay, now I've got like eight of these things and. I've misplaced the other end of it somewhere, hence the reason I have eight of these things, because I always misplace one of the ends. It's on the, the bench somewhere, I'm sure, but these things, you know, you can pop it out and turn it over, and you've got the large ones and the smaller ones. Um, this is handy to have. You've got, you know, a slotted or flathead or whatever flavor you want to call it, and the fill is on the other end, and these things work great. So a lot of times you can get that coupon for that to be free with any other purchase, and if you're just starting out, you know, everybody always says ham radio is an expensive hobby. And ham radio can definitely be an expensive hobby. I'm not I'm not here to tell you that it, it's a cheap hobby by any means. But it doesn't have to be ridiculously priced to do some things. You know, it doesn't have to be, oh, what's that guy's name on um, that amateur logic, Emil, the, the cheap old ham or whatever. You know, he. it doesn't have to be everything has to be the cheapest, but if you can save a few bucks on things that, you know, work just as well, save a few bucks on those so you can get the nicer, you know, I'm going to say handy talking just because I know some people love it. Hang on, I need the, the lifeblood. <clears throat> About to have to refill that one. But anyway, so that's a, what cost you a fortune? Eight. sure what he's what he's talking about he'll pop it up in a minute Got a little delay there but anyway so screwdrivers you got to have stuff to take you know stuff apart and whatnot um, and I don't have one in here because they're all at school but anytime that they have a free tape measure or a cheap tape measure at a Harbor Freight just get it okay um, I tell my kids in fact the beginning oh yeah <laughs> so ham radio will cost you a fortune but that's what I'm saying if if <laughs> your kids no longer have a college fund, my kid knows it's scholarship time, baby. That's why she's taking those two college classes now. So, um, but it's one of those those things that if it if you don't have to spend a fortune on it on something that works, you know, just don't. I mean, I'm not I'm not so picky that I have to have the soldering station. That's whatever the name name brand is. I'll get the one that works. Um, use a coupon to get it and then I have a little bit more money for other things especially like I said now that I'm trying to build up a, a workstation at, at school for that so uh, let's check and see what folks have going on in the chat before we go on I feel I have more Harbor Freight tools than, than I pay for yeah I mean the coupons I kid you not like my daughter knows when we go to Tupelo she, she just knows she's going to be in line either in front of me or behind me and she's going to be buying one of the, the things that are in my cart. 
and if I can get my wife out of the clothing store next door, she's going to do the same thing. And I usually can't get my mother-in-law to do it because she's so cool. She's actually buying her own stuff at Harbor Freight. So, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. You just have to have to save a buck where you can save a buck because there are some places where it definitely pays to spend the extra buck. You know, so like for example, um, oh, what's that? That girl's name is tweeting everywhere. Dixie DX or yeah, she's you know she was looking at getting her first radio and whatnot the other day, and it's like you know there are some things that user interface and stuff like that is definitely worth paying a little bit more for than you know trying to get some of these cheaper how do I say this probably it's cheaper otherworldly or other nationly radios that maybe they're not so intuitive on how to program and stuff like that so um, I think she ended up with an ICOM D star radio and I'm sure she's gonna love it but you know save some money here so you can buy the cooler toy there um, last thing Oops, sorry didn't re I did not realize that was still on Electrical tape, it's a it's a dollar at the Dollar Tree for two things of it, man. So I can't stand the Dollar Tree. Um, my wife likes the Dollar Tree, but I hate Dollar Tree like with a passion because because all I'm ever going to get at Dollar Tree is pretty much electrical tape. You can get that really crappy micro screw, screwdriver set that I was telling you about earlier. Those are at Dollar Tree too, and you know when you try to loosen that first screw and it strips out and then you'll understand why they're at Dollar Tree. But I probably have eight or ten packs of this stuff just because you never know when you're going to need it. I got one in the truck. I got a few at school. Got some out in the shop out there. I've got some in here just because you just never know when you're going to need it. So Miller Jones also makes a good cheapie. A good cheapie what? T.O. I've never heard of Miller Jones. So... Um, Craig WJ6F save money on tools so you can spend it at HRO Giga Parts. Yeah, and that's kind of it. If, like I said, if you save the money there, get the cooler toy over there. Um, and now, while this one is not necessarily something I would say is a beginner tool, I wish I had had it as a beginner. Um, because let me find the. All right, those things are just like the coolest thing since sliced bread. So to do it well, oh, okay, okay, you need a, a crimper, but the Anderson power poles, you know, if they had been, or I, I don't even know if they were around when I started. I got licensed in like late 93, early 94, I forget which, I think it was early 94. Um, if these things had been around, I probably would not have... Go ahead and admit my newbie mistake here. I, I melted a uh, Yaesu FT5100 once, installing it. And somehow or another, I got, you know, it was actually in, in my house or in my dad's house at the time. And uh, I was still in college. And I was hooking stuff up and didn't notice I had something hooked up to, you know, I had my polarity reversed. And anyway, long story short, I let the magic smoke out. Um, fortunately, Yesu fixed it anyway under warranty, even though it was very evident that it was it was a me issue. So, but these things are the coolest things since sliced bread, and I'm in the process of actually building a new workbench over here. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up power pulling everything at that point. I've got some stuff power pulled, but not all of it yet. Um, but these little crimpers, I'm just going to tell you, I had an old pair. I used to install computer networks just after college. And I had an old pair of, um, I don't remember what, they, they just, they crimped the little round jobber dues. I don't remember the real name for them. But, and then I got a pair of these. And I think these are the same ones. In fact, I, I think I bought these ones based on Smoke and Apes recommendation, if I remember right. But these things are the bomb diggity, man. I mean, you know, they just, they've got the little shelf in there to make sure things just go in just right. You crimp it, and when it's all the way crimped, it just releases. It's not like my old ghetto ones where, like, I was having to stick my finger up here and release this thing and hope I let, didn't lose a finger. I mean, I've already got a toe on the 
bookshelf I don't want a thing or two kind of thing. Yes, Mike, you do need another set of crimpers. There's a link down below. Um, let's see, Don is. Uh, I wish they were around in the early '90s. So, yeah, I'm I'm in the process of doing that now. Um, and I will tell you, ooh, I don't know where the box is. I bought an off-brand of the actual connectors because I was curious as to you know whether the quality would be the same and whatnot. And, you know, they're, I like them. I mean, they're, I hadn't had any issues with them. They're not the, the PowerWorks brand. They're, I don't know. And if, even if I was looking at it in front of me, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it anyway. But um, I think the link to that's in my store too. But I'm also, I've got one of these, and I'm actually going to get a bigger one for hooking up the other stuff. This, like I said, this isn't a necessarily you have to have it kind of thing at the beginning. I'm just saying this is going to make power pulley stuff a lot easier. And you can see I got the hmm, Chunzehui. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. But I can't speak as to whether that's going to hold up. Or not. I mean, the reviews looked good, but I haven't picked this thing up yet. So hopefully it doesn't like let out any magic smoke. But that's one of those things that. I highly recommend as you start building your your shack up and stuff like that. I highly recommend getting power poles because now I'm at a point where I've got you know some stuff and you know it's like for example to hook up the uh, radio to take to go poda. You know that's not power poled yet and it needs to be. It should be, but it's not. And so when it's time to take that bad boy out, it's, you know, reach back there, unscrew it, and you would think that I would have done it by now, but I just haven't yet because it seems like I'm always doing something. But, yeah, power pull the world. I couldn't agree more. I, In fact, that's, I'm going to do that this week. Before next week, I'm going to do that because the child unit is finishing her college classes this Monday, I think, is her last final. And so hopefully we can do a little POTA activation stuff before school starts the next Monday for me. Hang on. I'm going to have to break out the emergency coffee. Shh. Always carry the Yeti. See, people like Jason and Josh have their kegerator or whatever it's called over there. I just need a coffee rater. But I will tell you, by the way, not this isn't in my Amazon store at all, but coffee is – this little Yeti thermos thing will keep coffee warm for days. Like I go hunting in the winter and I can like go out in the morning, leave it there with coffee. And if I actually left coffee in it, which I did once because I had to leave for a fire call and uh, went back to the woods in the evening. It was cold and my coffee was still hot. I was like, geez, score. So – Let's see. These are the items for Christmas. When family asks, what do you want? Have this stuff on. Yeah, and that's a good point. You know, keep this list of stuff. I'm not saying go out and buy this stuff right now. Um, anime, you know, you said that you're just getting started. I'm not saying go buy all this stuff right now, but, you know, Don's got a good point. This is a good Christmas list. You know, just accidentally leave that list sitting there of things I really need and, you know, write it down and just kind of leave it sitting out in 14 different places she'll find it or he'll find it you know and then all of a sudden you have a stocking full of something other than socks and that's a good day um what was the other thing oh and while this is not a tool by any means okay if hot coffee is always good mike okay this is actually just a cheap and I don't remember how cheap because this one's a brand new one roll of speaker wire because if you want to really start having fun at least for me excuse me and I know several of, of the guys in here um, if you really want to have fun with with ham radio stuff start building some of your own antenna stuff now you know I know that um, K6ARK, I saw him in here earlier. I don't know if he's still in here or not. I know speaker wire is like way too heavy for him because you know if he, all of his stuff doesn't weigh under like four ounces, he's like, oh, I can't do it. 
but um, spe speaker wire is a great thing to have just to play with antennas. I mean, you want to try building an antenna? I mean, how many feet is this? Uh, let me find it in English. 100 feet, which means, okay, y'all do the math for me. I have 100 feet, but it's 100 feet of two wires, which means I have 200 feet of wire, and I think it was like, I don't know, $15 maybe on Amazon? It wasn't bad, but I got 200 feet of wire for 15 bucks. You know, I can make a whole bunch of resonant dipoles for that. I mean, you have to have some connectors and other junk like that, but you know, get your 3D printer, which is something that's not on here. Um, Ape, did you make a video yet? I, I don't remember if that video is... He's made, he's made several things. Yeah, he has. That, um, it's masks. That he's 3D printing, printed, and whatnot. Um, and Josh had the stream the other day about 3D printers. I've got the same 3D printer in my classroom that is actually going to come back home for a while. Um, that Ape's got, because you can make things even more cost effective doing that. Um, Abe, I don't remember what that 3D printer costs. It's been a while since I bought it. But basically, it's the Ender 3 3D printer. comes as a kit. Um, I built it in the classroom with my kids there. Some of them helped me build it a couple years ago. And it works like a champ once you buy Aquanet hairspray. Um, you know, because I need hairspray to keep everything in place. But that helps with adhesion and stuff like that. But that's another way that you do spend a little bit more up front to get um, to get the printer and the – yeah, so about 200 bucks. That's, and uh, that's the same one I've got, the Creality Ender 3. And uh, so for 200 bucks, and then you have to buy a spool of, of filament, or you might as well buy two because you'll start – my 3D printer. <laughs> and that's the best way to do it. If you know a guy with a 3D printer, that's the way to do it. But, you know, I've got one, so it's kind of one of the things. You can you can 3D print a whole bunch of stuff for ham radio using those things. So, you know, 200 bucks in a couple hours of your time putting that thing together. And there is a little bit of a learning curve to it, but that's another way to make things cost effective. And that makes... You know, those speaker wire dipoles and stuff like that. That much easier to work with. Um, let's scroll back through here. Gear IT 18 gauge for 200 feet. Ooh, I'm going to write that down because I did not see that one. I got it. So, yeah, so. Oops, don't drop the snips. So there you go. So you get four or four hundred feet. See you later, Jim. Good to have you, man. But uh, you get four hundred feet of speaker wire if you go with the Gear IT 18 gauge brand for twenty bucks. You know, I'm just saying, four hundred feet of wire. <clears throat> Mike, Mike can do those maths on the top of his head, I'm sure, on, on the, just how many dipoles can can I get all my all my bands there, Mike, with four hundred feet. So, anyway, um, any other tools? Let me scroll back up here see if anybody popped anything else in here that they just absolutely think I missed or whatever. Because, like I said, it is definitely not an all-inclusive list. If a lady wears it, does that not make it a lady shirt? Okay, you must be talking about the merch um, at the beginning there, Mike. And I've been told by... An authoritative source, i.e. my wife, no, they are apparently tapered differently and have smaller shoulder things or whatever those are. So, uh, let's see. I was taught how to solder by, I miss this one. Craig was taught how to solder by the army, so you can Im imagine how wrong that has gone. Yeah, you know, we just discovered, I'm not sure how we haven't seen that show alone. Um. It's been off for like I don't know how many years now, but so we've kind of watched a few of them, and <laughs> we were watching one today. It's like a couple year old episode, and uh, <laughs> dude like tapped out on the first day, and he's like, "Man, the army didn't prepare me for this." 
I was like, no, the army prepared you for something where you had, you know, bullets and people and water and MREs. Uh, let's see. I was taught by an engineer. He griped at me till I got it right. So I ended up having to gripe a little bit at school, Oklahoma Cam Ham Radio, but not too much. I don't, I don't like to gripe at him for exploring and having a good time, unless you're just doing something stupid and melting something expensive. Let's see. Anybody else got? <laughs> Kyle, I missed this. I'm surprised Harbor Freight doesn't uh, spell Balfangs. And, of course, you had to spell Balfangs wrong. Um, yeah, honestly, I am, too, to be to be honest. It kind of shocked me. That would be something that they would have at the checkout line. They'd have to, like, you know, mark it as, like, Prepper Radio or something. Let's see. Have a pair of snap-on four-inch flush cutters and bent tip needle nose pliers. Well, and that's a good point, Don. You said this a while ago, but yeah, I mean there there's something to be said. I'm not saying you have to buy the cheapest tool out there. What I'm saying though is that if you're just getting started, you don't have to buy the most expensive one either. Snap-on is probably one of the most expensive ones, but at the same time, like Don said, you know they'll they'll last a lifetime. So let's see. Church of the Anderson Power Pole. Let's see how long it takes me to run out of. Ask for a gift card from Amazon and Harbor Freight. Yeah, that's that's true. But you know, my wife doesn't like to buy me gift cards. She'd rather go buy me stuff. So if I have, you know, a list of stuff there, make sure you put brand and stuff like that. Because you know, not everybody sees. You just put soldering iron. They're gonna go grab the one at the Dollar Tree or something. You have to be pretty specific on your hint list. So let's see. Greg, good to have you, man. Nut drivers are good. That's a good point. Nut drivers, Bill. Um, that's a really good point. I don't have any of those in my shop at school. I've got some out in the shop outside. I don't think I even have any in here. Um, but yeah, you, you def nut drivers are definitely a good idea. Mike says, yes, they are tapered differently until they want to wear your shirt. So the Church of the Anderson Power Pole, it was up there about halfway up, and yeah, that's kind of that'd be kind of an interesting church to have. I wonder if I can get it with a starting that church in town. I doubt it, but we can call you Uncle Pastor Mike, and you can be the the minister of the Church of the Anderson Power Pole. So, all right, anything else that y'all? can think of that we didn't hit in the list of tools or just stuff that are nut drivers not the same as socks they can be um nut drivers are typically like on a screwdriver handle and the the end of it like i said i don't have one in here but the end of it does not um come off it stays i'm gonna make myself big now y'all stuck with looking at me for a minute Okay, the end of it doesn't come off, so, you know, you don't have to worry about losing the socket and stuff like that. Um, so, no, those are, nut drivers are different. They, they can accomplish the same thing, because a lot of times you can get, well, you can get a little screwdriver handle for your sockets. But, you know, Bill has a good point. I hate, I can't stand when a socket comes off of, you know, a ratchet or, or something like that. So, I imagine that would just drive me nuts and I would throw something somewhere. If like I lost a little bitty um, socket down inside something, so I think you're right too. I think Harbor Freight does have a lifetime warranty on their most of their stuff there. Last I heard, Harbor Freight offered lifetime replacement of pitch for Brent wrenches. Yeah, you know I'm just gonna walk in and ask them. I'm I'm going there apparently next week, and for some reason, other I don't know the other reasons, some stores or something, but I just heard Harbor Freight. Um, yeah, you are now the lead minister of a church, you know, and you can go get ordained or whatever it is online. So, and, you know, Sir Callum can tell you, you can actually, you know, become a, a lord over there in England if you wanted to. Uh, let's see. Somebody said something that precision jeweler screwdrivers. Yeah, and that's what Don said it somewhere. Yeah, at the very beginning. I have this is this is the flavor I have is the cobalt flavor and it's got the little bitty 
set that goes with it. Um, I like those. So, yes, I, in fact, I have all of mine are at school. Don, as I said, a third hand with the alligator clips. I don't think I – oh, wait, I do have one here. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, and this is the one that has the magnifying glass. Let me get myself out of the way because, like I said, you don't really want to look at me anyway. All right, so the third hand with the alligator clips, and this is the old man version because it's got the magnifying glass and because I'm getting old. But this helps with soldering and stuff like that. I have, I don't remember if I used this one, but the video I did about how to solder and stuff like that, I used a pair of these. So these are nice because they'll hold stuff together for you. You know, it's got several different ways you can tighten things up. Excuse me, to hold things in place, and that way you've got something so that when you're soldering, you know, and when you need to see what you're soldering for us older folks, that's what those are. And uh, well, Lord Lord Callum will definitely make it, so we we know Lord Callum will go there for you. The new Harbor Freight. I, that's the name of those snips that I was talking about. They're the Icon brand, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I got the cheap one. I think the Icon may be the expensive one. I think they spell like I K O N or something like that. I could be wrong. Um, some helping hands or PCB holder, Don. Yeah, that's. You're talking about those ones that have. It's got like a the sides on it, so it doesn't mess up. I don't have any of those actually. That would be a good thing to try to come up with, especially this year budget dependent we're hoping to uh do some some kit building and stuff like that i've got a few little kits of things and you know i've got a a couple things that richard stubbs down at mfj sent for my kids to try to try to build it most of the stuff that he sent though is pretty intense it's going to be down the road a little bit but let's see well, probably the same one yeah I need one with bifocals. I'm about getting there. In fact, my wife was going to make me stop by Walgreens today and try out different um, reading glasses because I can no longer read everything with my old reading glasses, which means I'm getting older and blinder. Gotta gotta love that English. Uh, see, I've always wondered what that was. I have one. Yeah, I, I the helping hands. I can't believe I forgot those because yeah, that's a. That's a good thing. He shrink the gator teeth. Oh, you're talking about just on the uh, for the PCB boards. So, yep. So, hey, Will, good to have you, man. So yeah, so Don's got the swear jar. Don't turn it into like you know Bob KCC day need a uh, a swear barrel. That's a good idea. I, I've got the 3D printer. I can just. 3D print a, a holder vice. Hey, hey, get on that. Mike needs one too. But uh, and that's you know that's one of those. I've had that 3D printer for a year and a half, and it's still not ingrained in my head that you know I could just print some of the stuff that I need. It's I, I'll sit there and eventually I'll come to that. But I'm like, it it needs to become a regular thing where I'm like, you know what, I can just print that. And go with it, because there, there's a bunch of stuff. So, oh, I thought he was talking about a way to make your own PCB holder vice thing or something like that. So, but there are a ton of 3D printer tools for use in him. Yeah, and that's like I was saying, Kyle. I just, it's just not fully ingrained. And I know part of it's because the 3D printer I keep at school, and then I do most of my ham radio stuff at home except for the stuff that I'm doing with the kids. And, you know, when I'm doing stuff with them at school, it's it's mostly stuff that they're working on. So if I don't, if I'm not actively working on it right then, it just escapes me while I'm there. Panavice. I'll have to look that one up. Chuck, it's a, not heard of them. But I, I am going to try to 3D print one. So, but let's see. I like where you're going with the 3D. Yeah, and that's, you know, like I said, I've had one for a while. Apes been going ape with his 3D printer lately, man. I mean, he's just constantly just, boom, look what I printed, boom, look what I printed, boom, look what I printed. And uh, I've got plenty of filament. I mean, some of his funky colors, like gold and stuff like that, I don't care. I need to just get it home and finish all my shack project stuff that is over there that I'm going to 
get lectured about it. It's still not clean. My kids are there, and that's what they're I want to 3D a knob cover for my KX3VFO. You know, Don, if you look at a Thingiverse, um, Thingiverse.com, it's probably out there, man. If it's out there, just find the one that you want, and I'll 3D print it for you. It'll give me a reason to get it and bring it home. So, you know, hit, hit me up later. You've got my number. Shoot me a text or a message or something, and we'll get that figured out. My kids are there, so... After my last video, I filled a 150 gallon tank. So, all right. So, looks like I've hit. I don't think I've missed anybody else's tools and stuff that they've mentioned up in there. If if I did miss one, throw it down in the comments below after this thing posts. Just make sure all the bills are. <laughs> so, but that's that. Um, once again, guys. Y'all do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, it helps us out, we do appreciate it, and I appreciate y'all being here, y'all take care.